Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here with Nate's Tech Update, and it's Thursday, July 28th, so it's time for another Thursday Thoughts. So before we get started with the tech news of the week, I wanted to announce the next two winners for my Mac OS line giveaway. So the first winner is Drummer7871, and the next winner is Gunther Sucks. So congratulations to those two winners. Your iTunes codes will be sent uh, to your inbox on your YouTube account. I want to thank everyone who entered by simply subscribing. I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys uh, really enjoy the videos that I post. Um, I apologize to everyone who didn't win. I know some of you guys even tried to leave me some flattering comments. But unfortunately, all I did was use uh, random.org to actually pick out the two winners. So my next giveaway I will probably do in the coming weeks. I will probably do something with the comments. So for those of you who did leave some flattering comments, stay tuned for that. Maybe you can actually win this time. We'll see. But uh, thank you for that. And let's go ahead and get started with the news. So the first thing I wanted to talk about this week on Thursday Thoughts was iOS 5 Beta 4, which was seeded to developers on July 22nd. This update was not only made available as a firmware download on your computer, but also it was the first over-the-air update that was made available to the iOS 5 beta series. I have a video demonstrating this, so if you want to get an idea of what it looks like, you can go ahead and check out my video. Apple also released uh, the new Lion developer, which was 10.7.2, in which they skipped over 10.7.1, which is kind of confusing to some people. It is uh, proposed that the reason they did this was 10.7.1 is basically going to be an a bug fix to the release of line only, so they don't really need to see that to developers because it's just going to be bug fixes, no new features, but 10.7.2 did include some new iCloud updates, which will also be releasing al um, alongside of iOS 5 this fall. Microsoft Office seems to be having a lot of bugs with line currently. Um, a tweet was posted that there will be an update coming in the next couple of days to fix the crashing issues, which is, a, uh, which is really nice to see because I know I use that suite a lot and I've been having some issues with it with Lion. So an update will be coming in the following days. Additionally, they announced in the upcoming months there will be an update that will um, take advantage of some of the new features in Lion, such as full screen and things like resume inversions. So next up, I wanted to talk about upcoming hardware. So, on 95Mac.com, some new case images have been posted which supposedly could support the next generation iPhone. It does have a larger area for a bigger screen, possibly 4 inches, as well as the case has tapered edges, sort of like what you'll find on the iPad 2 and iPod Touch 4th generation. Subsequently, this goes with the rumors that we've been hearing that the next generation iPhone will be lighter and thinner. We've also seen a new image that was posted on... Um, 95Mac.com, which shows someone using a possible iPhone 5 prototype that doesn't look like an iPhone 3GS or an iPhone 4. It's kind of hard to tell because the image is pretty blurry. It could be legitimate or fake, but I thought it was worth mentioning. We're still hearing that the iPhone 5 will be released the first or second week of September with an iPad 3 or iPad HD that supports a retina display even later this fall. We're also hearing reports of possibly an ultra-thin uh, laptop, 15-inch screen possibly from Apple, coming late this year, maybe possibly around Christmas time or early next year. It might be the next generation MacBook Pro that would be very thin, sort of like the MacBook Air, but it will be more powerful. Hard to say at this point. The, uh, two, the Ma uh, MacBook Pro was refreshed early in quarter one of this year, so we might see a new refresh as early as the end of this year or the very beginning of next year. So we'll have to wait and see as we hear more and more about that. Last but not least, a report has surfaced today about AT&T looking to implement data throttling um, sometime in the October time frame, which will be maybe a month after the iPhone 5 is set to be released. Now, this data th throttling would affect users like me who currently have the unlimited data plan in which you could use full speed data up into a certain cap and then once you reach that cap, your data will be throttled or slowed down so it won't be as fast as what you experienced before you actually hit the cap. So T-Mobile does something like this with their unlimited data plan. So basically you have two gigabytes of full speed data. Once you hit that two gigabyte cap, they throttle your speed so it does slow it down. So this might make me kind of angry. We'll have to see what AT&T decides to implement with this as we get closer to that October time frame. So thanks for watching the video. Please like it and subscribe. And as always, have a nice day.